<laughs> we ready to start? <clears throat> um, is, are you ready to start? I'm ready. Jesus. Jesus. I've Sound never been ready. more ready. <laughs> no, we, didn't, we don't have notes or anything. I nope, we're, we're going. This, this is fucked up. No, right. God damn it. No, no, no. Why what do we fail? Like, God. Ah, no, 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 no. It's good. <laughs> it's what we right. normally do, but take into the Yeah, Pax, Pax, we should not make that same mistake. <coughs> Are you actually okay? I don't games, video 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 games. It's August 26, 2009, and it's the Blizz. And this is Idle Thumbs 40, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. And I'm Jake Rodkin. Man, every week you cut into my thing a little I'm earlier. Really? I'm, 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 I'm Just crowd your space. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Crowd your time. So what's up? Uh, Nick and I went to BlizzCon. Oh, the Blizz. We conned the Blizz. Yeah. And now we're casting a pod. Yep. About we, Blizz. About Blizz. It's all about Blizz. Is it? Yeah. Nobody beats the Blizz. Nope. Um, we played some video games. There was a lot of stuff at BlizzCon this year. Yeah, they have three upcoming things, and they had news about stuff like BattleNet. Right. And the news part is is new. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like the news part. Is well, new. last year new it, news I mean, they new. had three games as well, but uh, but the yeah, ba- I guess BattleNet, that's true. BattleNet the same was the games, big, uh, basically. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Uh, Battle well, wait, BattleNet did, was definitely new, though. Did were they showing Lich King last year? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's uh, they might have the same some of these same games again next year. Yes, I'm they will. Thinking, they yeah, will definitely. At least Diablo three will. Yeah. Well, will. Cataclysm will still be there as well. Oh, you don't think they're releasing that next year? Well, I'm sure they are, but I, I would bet that BlizzCon will predate it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. They did Lich King yeah. two years in a row. But. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was cool. Um, you you played World of Warcraft, and the other two, I only played the other two. Right. Anything you want to say about World of Warcraft? Since I about can't a talk about that, and you can. Uh, I can't really speak to uh to what they had. I mean, the demo that they had was just the starting areas, right? Which was just you know World of Warcraft. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It's 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 kind of a exciting expansion. I mean, we yeah. talked about this a little bit on that. It's uh, a cool concept for sure. It's a really yeah, cool I'm concept. Actually, it actually sounds cool. And I mean, they I'm showed off, it, but it yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, on the panels they showed off, you know, sort of the scale of what they're going for, and every zone in the original game is getting new stuff. Which is crazy, and they're like they're shifting things around too. They're they're changing the whole structure of, of of you know level structure of zones. And not not Sithilis or Silithis. <laughs> I think that one's not changing. Really? Well, I just I did an interview with the uh, with the lead world designer on this expansion, <clears throat> and I asked him sort of how how they're prioritizing which zones need you know the most attention in the new expansion and which ones need less and he was like well that one he he basically listed off like 4000 zone names which i you know i don't yeah, right. it was very a confusing interview for me yeah i had the same experience actually <laughs> right. yeah yeah and I, you I know just, how like when Ashura goes into Dark Shore and then South Shore is right. on the yeah. left. And the, yeah, he mentioned those same ones in mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And I'm and I just it like, was. And I've played the game a lot, but man, if you're like a year removed from that, it just all sounds right. like it Chinese. It sounds like nonsense. Yeah. yeah. I um uh and you know they only gave us 15 minute interviews, so I didn't I just, I felt it was better to do the smile and nod than yes. to try to constantly yeah. be like. Right. Could you so point that what? out on a map of <laughs> right. Azeroth? <Yeah. laughs> I, where does this fit into the larger world of Warcraft? Um, and so I but guess most people, I bet mean, a lot of people at that show would have just been like, oh, oh well, I, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, well, and a lot of the, there, there were a lot, a lot of fan pre- sites yeah. too, and a lot exactly, of the, I mean, yeah. a lot of the press plays this game like crazy. So right, and a lot of the press that was there, yeah, exactly, was <laughs> fan sites. So we were probably in the minority as far as people right. who can't understand. Yeah, well, no, I mean, Warcraft this guy went straight into like, I think assuming I knew everything about yeah. World of Warcraft, and yeah. I just I didn't want to spend the time to not go with that but um yeah i mean i guess that zone he's yeah, like no one really like goes the there anyway they're so. like you know you know on this game you you click on guys and they die <laughs> right yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about i know it's so sad <laughs> like you know every time they in the in the keynote anytime uh like morheim or whoever would yeah. say anything about about mm. uh world of warcraft anything it was an everyone explosion in the crowd, yeah, yeah fucking world <laughs> it's the world and you know anything about starcraft 2 or diablo and like you know oh, eight the dudes are like yeah, right. the really polite golf clap yeah, kind of it's yeah, so yeah. sad 
Yep. Is that why they had to be like, uh, and we'd like to remind you, yeah. Battle.net, in fact, has more subscribers <laughs> right. than World yeah, of Warcraft yeah, yeah. by an ever-diminishing 500,000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was actually sort of a surprising statistic, statistic to me, though. Yeah, but I, I mean, is that say. active accounts? It can't be. I, asked, know, I, I asked them. And uh, they, yeah, they said it is. Yeah, yeah, it's active and it's unique. Yeah. So go StarCraft, apparently. Yeah, it's yes. basically StarCraft and War Three. Actually, I suspect yeah. oh, that's Warcraft true. Three, with especially with Dota, is a huge chunk of that. Yeah, maybe even a bigger one overall. I would, I would guess. Um, but uh, you know, you can tell sort of when you go because Nick and I both realized we still had Diablo 2 on our laptops. Mm, I haven't yes. played that thing. It's just Diablo 2 is one of those games that is ubiquitous for me. It's just kind of any any PC device I ever own, Diablo 2 will end up on it at some point. Oh, man, it was so like, funny. I was reading this interview that uh, f- uh, with Gabe Newell, which was, I think, it took place like a week before BlizzCon. Yeah. And somebody asked him, like, what are you playing lately? And he's like, well, actually, I'm playing Diablo 2 because I'm going to BlizzCon. <laughs> oh, man, Gabe and, Newell went uh, to BlizzCon? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I didn't see him there, I mean, yeah. obviously, since I didn't know that. There's like a million people there, but yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I got this 1600 by 1200 uh, resolution mod. I'm just, I got my barbarian. I'm jumping around. It's awesome. Sweet. Actually, you know what's weird about? Nah, I don't want to derail too much. No, but uh, he actually uh, prefers Super Mario 64 to Galaxies by a lot, and he, he went off on this whole thing. It was a, weird, okay, that is a I, weird thing to bring up. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's really weird. I just thought it was kind of interesting. Came, I think know. a lot of people do. Yeah, I suppose. I, mean, I don't yeah. think that's uncommon at all. Yeah. It's just yeah. I, I mean I don't, but I don't. Yeah, I, mean, I would say Gabe Newell is wrong, but he's well, he's welcome to think that as, yeah, as are everyone yeah. else, all um, other idiots. Yeah, but yeah. So Nick and I were we, uh, you know, we both had this game. So we're like, we should just start new characters, and so we did, and we went online, and just on one server at like one a.m. There were 40,000 people playing yeah. this goddamn game <laughs> right. that came out nine years ago. Yeah. And that was not even at a time like, you know, eight hours ahead of that. No one in Europe would be playing. It's not like you're catching any you know, right. time yep. zone thing. It's a bad time for basically everyone. Um, and it was just one server. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. I. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, you can still buy that game in a store yep. on the yes. shelf. It still, you know, tops the PC sales jars occasionally. Yeah. So did you did you have anything to say about uh Cataclysm? Oh yeah. Oh, uh other than it's a cool concept. <laughs> and they uh, changed, they changed a lot yeah. of zones except for that one? Uh no, not really. <laughs> okay. I mean, really? Well, no, you know, I mean, I, yeah, from what I played, I, I, the uh, the goblin starting zone was kind of bland, but the uh the wolf, the worgen uh starting zone was was actually fairly cool. Uh, it's, it's sort of this, it's, it's like the gothic. I don't know. I, for me, like any, any time they actually do something like a, a dark setting for a zone is just infinitely more interesting to me than, than almost I any totally other agree. yeah thing in that game. So, I mean, I, this was that and it was, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I generally like how World of Warcraft looks. I mean, I'm not the hugest fan of the game, but I think it looks quite nice. And, uh, and I, but I, but I do agree with you in that it is such a kind of exaggerated art style and it is so, um, colorful and they do use a certain almost like pastel palette yeah. that when you combine that with a dark area or an area that uses deeper colors, it does look really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a lot of times in the, in the areas that are just brighter in terms of their color choice, you kind of oversaturate the brightness and the, the sort of cartoonishness to an extent that right. just ends up looking slightly bland. I think like, yeah. The human area, for example, is yeah. I think a prime example of that. But a lot of the dark the areas, tropical zones, right? Which there seem to be quite a few of, which yeah. I thought was strange. Yeah. But the darker areas have a really cool offset between those two factors that yeah. I think plays off each other really well and looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Um. So that's nice. What's to cool hear, about? I, I mean, you know, the, the premise of the expansion is that you know basically the whole world is exploded. I mean, right. so I mean that some of the zones that were fairly bland to begin with, like the barrens, now have these like huge, like fucking, you know scars on the you know just everything's exploded and right. crazy and chaotic and how much of that stuff is gonna i mean is there gonna be any of that transition happening as events in world um, i don't i'm sure that they always do like an event on the last day before the expansion launches there's always a crazy like midnight event where stuff happens but uh actually what's cool is that a lot of you know the people who don't even have any expansion that's going to happen for everybody yeah i was thinking about that if you buy yeah. that game on a shelf yeah it like, will now like, just be this but like if you buy yeah buying <laughs> buying is while amazing. like two days before cataclysm oh right yeah yeah exactly you're gonna, you're gonna have a yeah. sad life right, of yeah. downloading <laughs> yeah, I love this barons this is so cool yeah. <laughs> well, i mean but no you but know. you you <laughs> already you already have to spend like three days of your life patching that game the first time you oh, it oh now. yeah I see and then saying, you get yeah. to do that all yeah. over again right. yep. <laughs> it's yeah. like oh man i got this whoa yeah and then they'll just redo everything in the entire game God, right. within 48 yeah. hours of you buying it yeah yeah it'll be pretty incredible actually i want to interview that guy 
Well, I mean, it's like when I went into when it's like when I went into Tabula Rasa and just went around. Just being like, hey, guys, just picked up this game. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. It seems yeah. really fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, you do that exact same thing. Just walk around World of Warcraft and be, just, you know, be an asshole. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Right. I love how bright everything is in this game. I love that <laughs> I love that there aren't huge, huge meteors everywhere. Right. Or like whatever. <laughs> yeah. There aren't huge meteors. This ground looks really unscarred. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure hope they don't ever scar it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's World of Warcraft. I probably won't resubscribe for that purpose. A lot of people probably are going to. No, I know it's a good move. It's a cool move. I mean, I I fully approve of it. Uh, it's like WoW too. Well, I mean, the, the best the best part about it is that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow, you thought that was funny. So, uh, I thought it was funny that I said that. Strangest expression on Chris's face. You looked at me weird, and no one knew what I was talking about. Yeah. I'm sure someone has has made that point non falsely. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people actually don't like the idea of this. I've seen I've seen yeah. some they they feel like it's just yeah. a lazy move like oh you didn't want to you don't <laughs> want to make so any lazy. new content yeah, right. uh <laughs> guess you're just going to you know blow up the old stuff <laughs> like yeah. there's like just like a there's button, a button that they for can explode. Like, deform the land Scar. right, right. Like, you know, no it's the sim city you, they're land. just you know deforming <laughs> right yeah, just or sort of like redo squirt, all squirt, like the mouse around, around a few times and that's true yeah what oh you know it's like yeah you're yeah raising the can you do they have like a kai's power tools plug in for their world that they can just play with or they sort of oh yeah Around. Power goo, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Yeah. It's not lazy at all. Anyway. No, it's 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 pretty impressive. I mean, I think this is much more interesting than just adding on a new zone. Yeah. yeah. It's um, also they're also adding on large, new zones. So Oh I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, large, I know you know large scale uh, for the sake of like, like narrative progression. Mm, yeah. Like why yeah. you want to play like why I always think that an MMO might be cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yeah. I guess Nick, you can probably speak to this. I wasn't even aware that they had already sort of large scale instancing kind of thing where you you change an area by way of a quest, and then it actually ch- ch- stays changed for you. It's like phasing oh, or something. Yeah, right, yeah, it wasn't. They didn't have that when I played. Yeah, the game. they just they implemented that recently. Um, um, there's just there's a there's a system now where you can you can finish a quest and have an effect on the world, and then for your like you like, only you see that basically. Yeah, right. if you've completed the quest, you which see which is it why I way. asked you know whether which is actually cool whether people who just buy the vanilla. I mean, because they could technically just do it so that if you buy the game, it's, it right. doesn't you know. But I I, that, that would be difficult. That would be pretty because, difficult though because yeah. almost every zone. It's would also be different. just cooler that if like the I agree. World, yeah, the yeah, world yeah, yeah, no, no, it definitely has changed. Yeah, anyone who shows up now, like, well, you know, you missed the idyllic days. Of, right. Because nice, you yeah. end up for those no, people, nice. there is and I like, like that Warcraft it's, yeah. lore that you would have gotten, but it's real. But this time, just everyone in the game has actually it. experienced. Yeah. There's like, like awesome. an actual physical change as opposed to like, oh, we just made up this huge story and now right. there's a new character <laughs> in this zone. <laughs> right. And you know, I mean, take simple, our word like, for it. Concept. This happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can tell because a guy explains it in right. And these enemies now have hats or something like new new costumes. Yeah. As long as they're top hats. Who the fuck are them? Were them they? They're dapper. Oh, the dapper class. But, yeah. yeah, you should be able to choose the dapper class, and all your <laughs> Just the upper your, class. <laughs> right. your, your monocles and yeah, and uh, right. yeah, man. The um, I'm starting to get more and more interested in Dragon Age. I mean, I already talked talked about this, but just as a quick detour, because you mentioned the upper class. Apparently, like you remember, I talked about the dwarf commoner whenever yeah. that was a couple weeks ago. Um, apparently the uh, the dwarf nobleman is equally crazy, but in a weird way where like everyone is trying to quietly murder or displace each other but in but still act in a really sort of genteel upper crust kind right. of uh <laughs> very uh gentlemanly way which is fascinating mm. that's also a cool thing for a video game to be set in um and it's the total exact opposite of what i played which is where everyone openly hates you uh very very obviously um so i'm actually really increasingly curious about this game now um anyway it's not by blizzard so we shouldn't be talking about it right now because only blizzard games are cool yeah. Um, we played StarCraft 2 and Diablo 3. Yeah. Did you win? Uh, we, we, we won what was available in Diablo 3 four times. Yeah. And Nick won a game against me four times, I think. So <laughs> the last game, the last game, oh, yeah, you did. I would have given myself a chance. You had a the, chance. If, if, the, if, the, if, the, if it wasn't on a timer. Right. Because um, I had other bases yeah. for the first time <laughs> right. that you didn't know about. But. Yes. It's like a clown fire. At le- in at least three games, Nick demolished me pretty, pretty hard. Were you guys yeah. playing? As- you know what? I just oh. I made a discovery. Oh. What did you, what did <laughs> no, you discover? Go ahead. You made a discovery. Uh, well, I remember I was oh, I was Nick, mentioning to you like you all of a sudden I, I can micro in this game. Remember, I, I was just like, whoa, yeah. it's weird how I've developed this skill seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, it's because I've been playing Dota a lot. 
Really? Like a lot. And that has directly led to this. Like, That's fascinating. Yeah. It, it just dawned on me while playing Dota I today. <laughs> I I... Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's, Are you it's playing pretty obvious. Starcraft? Are you playing Dota? Are you playing League of Legends? League of Legends, which is the same thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a burn on those guys, though. Like not even promoting their game. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I promoted it like a million times. Yeah, I know, just I cast, know. But, yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah, StarCraft 2 is looking amazing, though. Yeah, Nick Nick was freaking out about this game. The God. whole the whole weekend, Nick was just, God, StarCraft 2. Oh, man, StarCraft, this game is fun. This is a well, good, I can't wait to play this game. It was, it's really it weird, was though, amazing. because, it, I mean, it has existed in two previous, you know, BlizzCons. Yeah, you, you previewed this like, game I've, like I've, five yeah, times. Yeah, I've seen this game develop over the course of like three years, and uh, now it's finally like, you know, StarCraft 2. Uh, it's really good. Man, I mean, they've changed. They basically changed the whole the whole backside. You know, uh, you hit B, and there's you know those buildings, and then you hit V, and there's you know the advanced yeah, buildings. Nick's on the talking bu- about the difference between the basic and advanced building right. menus. Yeah, <laughs> what about them? In layman's speak, yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you know, you, when you press V, you see like well, press I, B, and then there's those. Everybody's buildings. played StarCraft, right? Uh, yeah. No, um, unfortunately not. But uh, but yeah, no, the whole the whole the whole upper you know the whole second half of of a round the second is, tier of the yeah the yeah. second tier of, of of it's like completely changed yeah it and really is. even it's totally some basic different. almost every unit has seen some kind of massive change yeah and uh, even just the art now it just looks amazing and that the was, music that was is, actually yeah the music is really good the music is really good God, that it's just like shockingly it's, yeah it's just shockingly it's shockingly shockingly good I love Starcraft. <laughs> Nick is just devolving yeah. into like an amoeba who just wants to absorb Starcraft too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I no, that was actually really um it, they were stressful games for me because I, I had no clue what I was doing really. Like this was the first time I'd actually played this game multiplayer. Um I played a uh, I played one single player skirmish game when we were at Blizzard, but this was the first time I'd played it actually multiplayer. And uh, yeah, you're completely right. The entire second tier, yep. the first tier was at least for Protoss is actually largely they, similar. They kept they kept it similar. Um, they kept it fairly familiar. Yeah. There are a lot of changes, but yeah. they're not as as. But much. they're not super fundamental. But right. the second tier is is totally different, and I had no goddamn clue what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Also, one game I played the B button on my keyboard oh, yeah, was broken. Right. Yeah. Which is the which that is the, the uh, <laughs> fucking yeah. shortcut I need more than almost any other. It's for you yeah. know those buildings. Yeah, those buildings. Yeah. It didn't want me to get into those buildings. <laughs> Um, yeah, that sucked. Oh, and my one key was also broken, so I couldn't bind a group to one. That was the one where I think I ended by nuking your base three yeah, times. Yeah, Nick row. nuked my base so many times. I spent the <laughs> I first. I can't build anything <laughs> easily. <laughs> well, I totally got that, like, nuclear launched it. Nuclear launch detected. Nuclear. It was really hard because we were on a 20 minute time limit, and so my whole construction was just centered around getting as many nukes as possible and then making sure that I got all my ghosts over there in time. Yeah. Uh,. Yeah, but no, they've they've done a lot of really cool things. I mean, just like a lot of small touches that I really enjoyed. Like when you build three workers, and they're not like you know they just pop out of your base, right. and you're looking at you know maybe halfway across the map, it'll pop up like a little icon will pop up in the lower left hand corner, and it'll say just three idle workers. And if you right. click on if it, it takes you the, right if you to click those the guys. Totally button as well. It'll take you directly to the, right. to the latest unused one. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah, and it cool. now shows you on the screen uh, little icons. Uh, that are your numbered control groups. So when you set control groups one, two, three, four, whatever, right. it shows you on the screen and has a tiny little icon representing what's inside it. It's incredibly useful because That's you great. just have to remember all that shit before. Yeah, yeah. and you can you can uh, I, I mean so you can you can have an infinite number I think of guys in a group or you know effectively yeah, infinite number so, of yeah. guys in a group. I never ran into a limit, uh, whereas before it was only twelve I think. Right. So it's a uh, it's interesting in that it in that it looks and feels so much like StarCraft, but it's also um, it's been refined in so many ways that just reveal themselves the more you play it. I yep. I I mean, Nick's played it. That's good though. It's hugely more than I have, but even in just a couple games. That sounds at least um, in theory like exactly what you would it's want. Exactly out of it's exactly it is yeah. pretty much exactly what you want. Yeah, right from the multiplayer, where and then the single player is like totally different. Yeah. So it's the right. I think the right choice in both directions for sure. Yeah. It's a, a very well considered game. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how about that third Diablo game? Uh, it's really fun. Were you a monk? 
Uh, we each played as every class. <laughs> yeah. We went back yeah. there so yeah, many times. Kind of <laughs> and then the last time we played it, we... Did you duel wizard? Uh, we did, that was our we first. We did. That was our first. Oh, because they actually had to unlock the monk before. We, yeah. we, that was like the first thing we did when we got in the door. And then after they made the announcement, <laughs> yeah. like two hours oh, later... Oh, we got to play as the yeah. wizard! <laughs> yeah, for, well, we yeah. did. Said, yeah. Within five minutes of, of BlizzCon right. opening, actually, Nick you got and I a good, were wizarding um, it up. <laughs> there was a, you got a good screenshot that you need to remember the post. Yeah, that was when we were playing as dual barbarians. Right. And Nick was playing a barbarian called Barbu, and, <laughs> and my name was Remo or something and yeah and, uh, we'll, we'll show you guys this yeah. but anyway um it uh it was good Wizard. it was super fun i'm i'm uh excited about it yep and uh, so is the monk those were probably the stand up the monk was really good yeah yeah but i mean i i i tend to think that i mean you you weren't very happy with the uh the, the witch, uh, witch doctor. doctor. I wasn't not happy, but it seemed I think what, less. I th- yeah, I less think what they're doing though. The other two. I, when this game comes out in two years, I would guess. I know, it's, God. But I, you know, it's it's the kind of thing where they probably designed the monk, and that'll be everybody's favorite class, and then they'll they'll, right. they'll fix the witch doctor. No, they, and that'll they be everybody's favorite. But it yeah, feels like yeah. that's probably what's going on. Yeah. The witch doctor just hasn't gotten much attention yeah. lately. And, and you know, I have to I have to say, <laughs> like, I I general for the most part, I really like how how Diablo three looks. I mean. I, I do have you know some of some huge Diablo nerd opinions about about the difference in style between Diablo one and two and three. I mean they're all different, um, but generally speaking, I do like how it looks. But there is one thing I am kind of bummed about in all particular: that color. And, right, <laughs> and it's the it's that the witch doctor. I just I think the necromancer was such a great visual thing with the army of skeletons. Like I, I feel like that is the world of Diablo. Is is these these crazy? It is the fucking skeletons. Yeah. Well, Diablo, dude, hell, it's fucking like the oh, name. Oh, oh, I mean, I it's so saying. suggestive yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. of this idea of 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 sort of fire and brimstone and, yeah, sure, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And I just the witch doctor seems really weird and out of place. The witch doctor seems like it's from Act Three, three of Diablo yes. Two, right. which is the least Nobody in character really liked. of of Diablo. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's just uh it's fine. I mean it doesn't it yeah. does it's not like a, it's not breaking the game or anything, but it, I do hope they sort of reconsider that class a bit. Yeah. I mean there were some fun things with that class that I oh, yeah, discovered. Totally. You can have like the exploding dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once good. I discovered the fact that you can have your little dog minions, but then if you, you get the spell that explodes them like corpse explosion worked. Yeah. So you they basically they're running around right. and then they just sort of you hit a button and one of them explodes and then you can hit another button, and then the second right. one explodes. I mean, you can just set off this chain right. reaction of exploding dogs that right. just pretty much explode everything around you right. if you use them. Yeah, and that is what that, corp- that is what corpse yeah. explosion in Diablo Two is about. I mean, right. there was nothing more awesome in Diablo Two than marching into a room full of enemies with corpse explosion, and then getting your army of dudes to start killing a few of them, and yeah. then giving you into a perpetual cycle of never-ending corpse, corpse explosion. Yeah. yeah, it's it was amazing. Um, I still feel like the necromancer necromancer is going to be a cooler class than than the witch doctor is the necromancer in diablo no, no no but i feel like the other classes uh th- this is the reason i feel okay having this opinion because i really feel like the other classes they seem to have really improved a lot it- it's it's only that one that i think the necromancer is much much cooler but it's quite possible that they may in fact add the necromancer in I with an it. expansion or something they said they well yeah maybe an expansion we'll see i don't think they'd have two, yeah, pet, three, two pet uh, classes. necromancer's quest <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know um, but the path uh, of the necromancer. Bob. Yeah, I mean it's, it's unlikely, but it, it's yeah. it's certainly possible. I think the wizard is definitely an improvement over the sorceress, though. I mean the 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 um, just uh, general part of it is just the way the game works, like the the uh, the, the the sort of basic attack. Uh, now, when you have like a wand or whatever, right. it's nice. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that that's seems something way more, use, wand. Way more yeah, useful yeah. than the one in, in Diablo right. 2 for yeah. sure. Yeah, you can just stand back as opposed to, you know, right. having to decide whether to whack a guy with your staff or just do nothing. Right. Yeah. And also, the, the general approach they've taken to potions um, oh, and right. help, I think, benefits the wizard a lot. Um, like in Diablo 2, and Jake is. I'm doing nothing. <laughs> nothing is happening. In Diablo 2. Uh, in Diablo 2, you basically have to constantly be chugging potions um, whenever your health is low. Because that that's just how you get more health. I mean, it's not. Yeah. I could be cre- sort of have, have a grievous memory fault here, but I there's no healing spell in in Diablo two, right? I don't. I'm trying to think of the paladin had a direct healing spell. Oh, the, the paladin maybe, but the 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 sorceress definitely didn't. And um, uh, and so, you, so you'd kind of just be locked into that same cycle with all the other classes where you just you know there's no reason not to just have a million potions all the time and there's, you just chug them constantly. Whereas in uh, Diablo 3, you're constantly, uh, not constantly, but 
fairly often loading up, uh, generating little health orbs as you kill enemies. And it's nice to just have that be integrated into the flow of the game. And so if you're the wizard, I, I almost felt more confident getting right up in there and attacking guys. Whereas in Diablo 2, you know, especially uh, early in the game, there's no real, it doesn't encourage that really. Um, so that, that seemed a lot cooler. Um, that class seems good. Yeah. Also, I mean, in terms of mana, I think, that, I mean, there are no mana potions. There are no, no mana potions so at all, you, right. So you're basically using your, your spells as you would, say, your sword as a barbarian. Right, exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's a huge improvement. You don't have to true. worry about yeah. managing your mana potions, figuring out, you know, okay, I've got six left, I can use right. these cool spells now, and then I have to basically do nothing until I go back to, you know, town or whatever. Right. So, And I suspect that all, they didn't have this available in the, in the BlizzCon demo, but I suspect skill runes with the wizard are going to be rad. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, I mean, if you, last year they they showed off all that oh, stuff. Okay, yeah, the, I wasn't uh, there last year. Oh god, it was amazing. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. You it was, it was it. amazing. I missed an amazing wizard. It was really amazing. Like the combinations that you could just come up with. Yeah. Uh, you know, teleport. They're not. Mixed, I think we teleport talked, mixed I mean, with something. Yeah. You could like teleport into a guy and explode him and right. do all these crazy. They're, they're not things. dynamic at all, are they? I mean, all that stuff is predetermined, right? Oh, it has to. be. I mean, it's yeah, still fine. Gotta, yeah, I'm just checking. They gotta code that in. Right. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I think they're going to be enough combinations. But that's nice be because that satisfying. means you're not going to get anything where it's just the same as something else, except this one adds lightning damage instead right. of fire damage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a custom. It'll be fairly thing unique. for each. Right? Yeah. Um, and there are some cool things like I, you know, I I do love the old 2D sprite work just for that weird, very um, gritty, uh, archaic look. But one really cool thing about the move to 3D is now, of course, corpses can be affected by physics. And so, oh, yeah. you you know, Nick and I, we were playing and we got to this bridge and you kill a bunch of guys on the bridge. And then as the wizard, if you cast, you know, a big destructive spell, the corpses will be flung off the bridge and it just looks... Oh, it looks like Myth by Bungie. Right. Yeah, exa yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, is it actually kind of does. Yeah, kind of, it does yeah. actually. Especially with all the exploding the blood dudes and, and blood just, everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is very Myth. Yeah. It is extremely Myth. Yeah. They're, they're, that's so Myth. That's so Myth. Um, yeah. There's uh, maybe a little too much blood and lack of other interesting death animations, in fact. I would agree. Um, Diablo 2 had a ridiculous range of death animations. Yeah, I mean, that well, was they got plenty of time to add those in. Yeah, yeah. I guess they do. Yeah. Um, but Diablo 3 definitely defaults to huge shower explosion of blood. Yes. Um, which, oh, man. you know, could be worse. Speaking of that, completely unrelated to Blizzard, I was playing TF2 today, and it's a birthday day today. Or oh, yeah? two days ago, if you're listening to this now. So everyone was exploding in rainbow confetti and balloons and gifts. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Thought I'd share that. <laughs> Man. So uh, Diablo 3 should switch that if you don't like the blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did say they'll have adjustable gore settings, but it probably Hopefully won't do Hopefully it that. turns all the way down to balloons and uh, confetti. Well, did you, guys play, uh, did you guys play Halo 3 with that, with that uh, skull mod? No. It's, I remember it's hearing hilarious, it. yeah. In Halo 3, one of the skulls you can get allows you to turn on party mode, right. which every grunt you headshot, their head explodes into confetti and it goes, yay! Like a court, <laughs> like a whole crowd of grunts in the background cheers. That's nice. It's the best thing ever. It was really cool, especially in a game like Halo, because it is that, that bungee sense of humor that right. has sort of been yeah. dormant for quite a while, at least within the con within their games themselves. You know, they, they still have that attitude in their kind of PR, but... Um, it does have that that great old school kind of bungee feel, but in Halo Three, um, so Diablo Three was fun. Um, the world in general, I guess, just feels more dynamic and interactive. You know, you're in a, uh, a well, like when you're underground in a cavern, you can actually just hit, shoot, or or strike big stone pillars, and they'll mm, crumble yeah, and fall. Yeah, yeah. And there was one really great dungeon. Uh, I thought it was great where you go in, and as soon as you enter. A timer starts, yep. and it's like you've entered this cavern as it's kind of collapsing, nice. and you have three minutes to f to get to the exit, wherever it is. And What's great about that is I assume it was born out of just somebody trying to come up with a way to cause a player to make a decision between dying or going for more loot. Right, exactly. I mean, which is like exactly what it is. It's just, yeah. Oh god, like yeah. like there's that awesome thing like halfway right. across the screen, but if I go there, I'm probably going to die. Right, and the, you know, I mean, the incentive is that if you survive the uh, because if you die, I don't, there's no penalty. You just no, respawn. No. But if you don't complete it, you you get you know. If you, you get, do complete it, you get a ton of experience. You get a ton of experience, and if you don't complete so, it, you get uh, nothing, and it's right. over for it's gone yeah. forever. Yeah. Um. And that and that was cool. I mean, it was sort of minimized in our case because we were playing obviously temporary characters that we never right. see again. So that that decision was less present, but I it you could still feel it. You know, like oh, there is some cool shit that I might want to use right now. Um, and it was, there's nothing like that at all in Diablo 2. That was a totally new edition. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, th those games are so comprised of random dungeons that just a mechanic like that makes it feel totally different. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I suspect things, if they have other things in that vein. Um, well, what's nice is that, I mean, I, they were saying in general that the end of the game will be, uh, you know, it, it won't just be, okay, now we're going to, you know, just go kill the same boss 50 times, which is pretty much what everybody did at the end of Diablo 2. Right. Um, you know, because a lot of this stuff can be randomized and regenerated and it'll, right. it'll work in the same, you know, way that it'll work. Yeah, well, people works. took it to the extent where they made custom bots that were specifically oh, yeah. programmed yep. for a specific boss where it knew exactly how many steps to take in one direction, yep. exactly what spells to cast, like for the optimum destruction of this boss. And you could just, I did it one time just to see what, what it was like. And it literally, all it does is input specific mouse and keyboard commands into your computer and it just plays the game and you just watch your character walk up to this boss hit it a bunch of times and then click everywhere on the screen so that it grabs any loot that that might be it's it's hilarious uh and people will just run that for days and harvest all of the uh stuff that would drop and then sell it on the internet that's a fun thing and there in fact nick and i went yeah i know it was it's such a stupid stupid uh thing to have developed as yeah. a way to play a game and uh you know nick and i signed on a battle net we're playing it and there were still tons of people in there spamming to go to their stupid website and right. buy their diablo actually stuff. what was hilarious playing world of warcraft i don't know how this happened but i was just running around in the starting zone um of the cataclysm beta and uh there were already spammers at like just like <laughs> yelling like go to go to like, gold elite blah 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 dot com the blizzcon yeah. beta i don't understand it, i couldn't figure Jesus out if it was if it yeah i, I have no idea how that was happening <laughs> <laughs> like maybe there were like people set like i have to assume that there were like employees of those right. companies sent so, to blizzcon right. to spam all the yeah. people playing the game you can never otherwise like, you can what, never escape how does that work how is that but did you have to go to demo stations? Yeah. And like, wouldn't a Blizzard employee walk by and then be like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Google, like, just someone just pasting the same string and hitting enter <laughs> over and over again? Like, I can see you right here <laughs> spamming your goddamn gold site. Yeah. I, I notice you. It was really weird. Secretly, Blizzard actually runs all of that stuff. <laughs> right. And they forgot to turn it off for Blizzard. <laughs> Fuck, we left it all on the beta server. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I hate that shit. Yeah, I mean, I know it's an obvious thing to say, but it like it's it's like email spam. It is just one of those things that we're basically stuck with forever. And there's well, they're gonna nothing... be able to crack down on it with the new Battle.net. Why? Because everything is tied to a unique account. Oh, right. So unless they want to, uh, you know, buy up a thousand accounts or, or well, they, I guess they, they could just they, they could they just... probably will. Yeah, I mean, they already do I that suppose, with yeah. World of Warcraft. I, I mean... don't know if you can create a a Battle.net account. Just I don't know what that's tied to exactly. An I email can't address. Yeah, so maybe you could just do that. I mean, if someone's willing to pay an additional fifteen dollars a month every time they they make a new World of Warcraft one, I'm sure they're willing to do whatever else you'll need to do. That's true. That's unfortunate. Did you see the thing? Um, what's the name of the studio that makes Eve? Uh, CCP. CCP. Yeah. Did you see the thing where those guys were running a bunch of stuff to figure out who were who were uh, doing like uh, what is it? Isk. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the, the currency. Yeah, it's yeah. for for currency stuff, and they like killed off a few thousand accounts, and their server load dropped by a third. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh shit! It was oh, they, no. they published the charts in their really? blog. I was like, we, I missed we, that. They, they ran a bunch of stuff to figure out that's like which accounts up. were doing that, and they killed them. And it was all the people who had just were just spamming, uh, like doing weird like mining spam and stuff to to raise gold. That's insane. And the server load chart just goes boop, and it just drops. It's like, oh my fucking god! So uh, <laughs> god. one guy, like one legitimate guy, is just like, I just really love mining. <laughs> well, that's actually what they said. They said in the zones where they were they not all of the all of those people out they're like actual like uh in eve settlers who are like mining's now a worthwhile profession so like, oh, they're, right. they're just, yeah. they've, like, they've just boosted the local economy yeah. like, right, the or, like is gone. Yeah. the job market for uh, yeah for, yeah. for mining on asteroids is apparently <laughs> is viable now that it's not just crowded with spammers <laughs> that's hilarious yeah so that happened government yeah. creating jobs <laughs> yeah all this i was just reading their blog because i was linked to that but that and the um, and the Plex stuff is all really amazing. What stuff? The what stuff? Plex is that the what, what it's stuff? Called? What the fuck? The what Flex? stuff? It's the something. It's like the the what stuff? Oh, it's the four letter acronym. Uh, like the pilot license, something or other in Eve. It's like instead of currency, there's this other. There's another sort of. Ugh, I'll have to look it up and talk about it all yeah. the time. It's an interesting thing where uh, you can like buy. It's uh, 
basically buy time for your account or for other people's. Accounts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this. It's like an. It, but it's it's the sort of the second economy. Uh, oh the, okay, it's, okay. It's so they they've stuff. just named it or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, I've uh, I've sort of done that a little bit. It's it's interesting. <laughs> it's, so but it's, it's weird. Like, what does that mean to say you've done that? What does that imply? Well, I've 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 uh, I've actually I've done both ways. I've I've used real money to buy ISK and then I've sold ISK for real money. Uh, there's it's basically just a weird transaction. Right, well, this thing isn't, but, isn't about money; it's about time and. Well, Eve. I know, but that's how you do it. You uh, you basically, I mean, you can sell ISK to a company that will buy it for in return. Uh, a company? You mean a website somewhere? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean like the actual developers of the game. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's built, okay. It's, it's actually built I in. That, yeah, it's built into that. the project or into right. the product now, so yeah. you can. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, because they were missing out on a lot of. Uh, right, a lot but of I mean, they're, they're hoping to do that to keep. Uh, right out of game finance trading going on where it's all you either have in game currency or you have uh time right you know paid paid account time yeah which you can also give to other people who are in your company and that sort of thing that game is ridiculous it's, it's but reading all the stuff about the spam versus server load and about their like yeah. Yeah. secondary economy management of, like what the fuck is going on yeah. sorry anyway it makes you want to talk about all that mmo stuff yeah but uh all that MMO stuff. Nick's MMO stuff has been a weird, like, <laughs> uh, red herring for the past month. <laughs> yeah. Where every week is like, anyway, eh, I have all this MMO stuff yeah. to talk about. And we're like, oh, what stuff? And he's like, oh, I, you know, I don't know. Just a bunch of stuff about MMOs. Yeah, Nick's and MMO every- stuff after the break. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Time for the break. All right. Video game. I mean, maybe not. It's the, but- it's the trade-off between a, like, slightly more in-depth conversation and beating a horse to death. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it could be one or the other. <laughs> could be the, uh, I mean, it, it could be both. I mean, it's Beating a, a horse to death? <laughs> beating sorry. the dead horse, I'm I know, sorry. Beating a horse to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, right. To beat the <laughs> weird, like, that's European prison, are you are beating well, a horse to death? You know, to, <laughs> yeah. to, to, to beat a horse that's dead, you've got to beat it to death first, right? I mean, Well, it could have died from some other cause. <laughs> I guess. And then someone showed up and starts beating it up. <laughs> <laughs> could be like a dead horse bag. Yeah, <laughs> feeding a dead horse back. Oh yeah. Speaking of a horse, did you see the Time Donkey screenshot? <laughs> no, I still haven't seen it. Wait, we should be talking about this on the podcast. Oh. Video game. It's pretty great. We're though. back. Speaking of horse bag. Yeah. Speaking of horse bags, what, Nick? There's a Time Donkey screenshot that exists. Of what? A of donkey? a Time Donkey. What does it look like? It looks like a regular old donkey, but he has a gold really? chain. I'm not going to pay for that. It's like a gold chain, like a hardcore uh, rapper chain. Really? Yeah. Is it, like, sort of is, it like a, is it like a Flava Flav? Does it have a clock on it? Uh, it may, actually. There's an Because he is a time, it's a, he is a time donkey. Well, right. Oh, I, be pretty good, actually. It may, it, he may actually have a clock. It's, he's facing away from the camera deliberately, I assume. <laughs> oh, man. And, the uh, clock will be a reveal. He's there facing be... this, this sort of weird landscape with all these portals. And yeah. I have to assume that those are like his portals to other, you know, dimensions. Oh, uh, man. What the <laughs> hell is this game? I don't even know what it is. There's, I don't know. There's a video of it, and it is about recording your donkey and then playing it oh, back right. with yourself. Yeah. I saw they're starting a beta soon or something. Yeah. It is a fucking old clock. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's great. We're looking see. at a screenshot. Yeah, there's right a now. screenshot on Blur. Oh, nice. It's blurry, it's, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. It's blurry. So, it's definitely a donkey with a yeah, gold chain. That wasn't the one I looked at, but that... Uh, That's pretty that excellent. Is, so, yeah. it's a time donkey for sure. Is he wearing some kind of hat? He might have some sort of hat device. Yeah. I hope it's a top hat. No, it doesn't look like a top hat. It's sort of a fez, maybe? Like some kind it, of looks like, it looks like the chain might wrap around up his neck and then become a headpiece. Like, it might be a time <laughs> machine. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. All so, right. Oh, it might not be. It might great. just be a vest. I mean, a fez. Jake might be inventing an even more ridiculous donkey. I think that the donkey has some sort of metal apparatus that goes up his neck and becomes a time helmet. <laughs> Sweet. So. Wow. Jake's time donkey. Yeah. Beating a dead time donkey. The description of time donkey is the donkey travels through time against his will. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, but, so it's like the time traveler's wife. Yeah, but yeah. but the tacos are delicious. It says because it's the internet. But I'm glad that the donkey travels through time against his will. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Ah, <laughs> uh, time donkey. Yeah. Uh, could I love him more? Probably a little bit more when he's less blurry. <laughs> I need more definition in my time donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Time donkey <clears throat> HD. Uh, so, so what's next? We should, we MMO pro- stuff or Battle.net? We, we should probably tackle Battle.net. All right. So uh, that I can continue. Yeah. be something I don't talk about. Battle, <laughs> Battle.net <laughs> is uh, the new one that launches with StarCraft 2. Oh, Battle.net 2? Battle.net 2. Battle.net 2. I think it actually is Battle.net 2. Point oh. Point oh, yeah. Point zero. Is uh, pretty crazy. It's, like it's been 1.0 since Warcraft 2 came out? <laughs> no, since, yeah, since Diablo came out in 1996. Oh, was it Diablo that brought Battle.net? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, yeah. So when it's yeah. like 13th year or 14th year anniversary. Yep. Jesus. Um, oh. Yeah, it's been, it's been, by the time StarCraft 2 comes out, it will have been nine years since Blizzard released a non-Warcraft game. Ten years? Ten years? Uh, Lord of Destruction came out Lord in 2001. Lord of Destruction, I suppose, was technically 2001, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, that's Close. really weird. Because, you know, that, that's, that means that, I mean, uh, Warcraft 1 was 94 or 95, I think 94. 94. So that means in, they did, created right. all their franchises and yep. released amazing and games stopped. for each of them yeah. in six or seven years, six years basically, right? I mean, it took them, I'm sure it took them a year or whatever to make Warcraft 1 because they, that's about how long they took for some of those games in that, yep. uh, in those days. And so it took them six or seven years. And then in another 10 years, uh, they released basically Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft. Well, yeah. I mean, Except, I mean, the Diablo developers left and then, yeah. and then World of Warcraft well, of became left, so yeah. large that the StarCraft right. team had to go over there. I know. It's crazy talking to those guys about what the teams are yeah. all doing because they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, our team just got totally commandeered yeah. by the, uh, the Warcraft team guys for a while. The art team specifically, yeah. you know, pretty much destroyed the StarCraft 2 art team. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's weird. But anyway, it Battle.net is, weird. is finally... It is weird considering they have like 4,000 employees, but yeah. I know, I know, I know. It's always <laughs> so funny when you're... Because it happens a lot. I've had this answer come up frequently when I talk to Blizzard guys. Yeah. And, and they're like, oh, you know, we could be doing this, but we just don't have the resources for yeah, it. You know, right. we don't, we don't really have the bandwidth. 400 people at that Irvine <laughs> studio. <laughs> Dude, 400? There's 1,000. No, or uh, I'm sorry. Just at Irvine, 1500. there's 1,000. Yeah, or right. are there 1,500, really? Yeah, but I think... Yeah, Jesus. I can't remember the breakdown... Um, in terms of you know actually yeah people well i think are, a third oh you know what i think it is a third i think a third of them or something are support so right, yeah. that would make sense if it's yeah. 1500 and then a thousand okay but um maybe even more than a support but they have a lot of people there for sure um anyway they're finally making a new battle net and in fact the guy heading it up is greg canessa who was uh you headed up xbox, xbox live, live for seven Arcade. years i yeah. mean uh yeah. it was his kind of pet project and um He's worked at he worked at uh, at PopCap more recently for a couple of years, but he's his big deal was Xbox Live, and um, he's probably a good person to have on board there. Yeah, um, it, the new Battle.net looks crazy. I mean, I'm I'm sure most people saw the news that StarCraft Two not not at launch, but at some point after launch, will allow you to sell mods through the the Star to the a Star Battle.net to marketplace mod store. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kind of probably, I think, a good move to do it after launch because that'll ensure that from launch until that point, there's already a healthy kind of environment of free stuff. mods. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So it's not a situation where also, everyone I mean, immediately starts just... Nobody could create a high-quality mod. And, right, but and people then could sell stuff probably. right off the bat and sour the yeah, exactly. entire Well, I don't know how that's exactly going to work. Oh, well, you can't if, you, if they're not opening the store. No, yeah, anymore. I know. I just I don't know if they're going to allow everybody to just put in you know insane price on their mod or whatever. I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. There may be some kind of uh, process... They're, it sounds like they're being fairly ambitious about it, though. I mean, they led they led off specifically with the example of, you know, uh, Rob Pardo specifically with, you know, he, he they would like to see people actually hiring a small development team to make a StarCraft II mod yeah. with the assumption that they'll be able to recoup their investment, which is pretty, pretty extreme. That seems that seems maybe a little like wishful thinking, but I mean, but you never Probably. know. I mean, but I mean, is the idea that they're hoping that. In the future, instead of Dota clones being made by other studios, they will be made for pay on the uh, well. They even they, well, they even what's weird about it? They said that Dota wouldn't even count as something that they would see as being priced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, so I mean, it's, want it's, even they more got ambitious stuff. Yeah, they they're looking they, at really ambitious. I mean, the editor's going to be pretty pretty expansive. I yeah. mean, you'll be able to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, with that editor. They, they, uh, they're even programming functionality in the editor that's not used in their own games, like right. a, a, a specific item system, which StarCraft II doesn't use at all, but they are putting into hmm. the editor just because they think it's something that people might need for a custom game. So Crazy. All right. Yeah, it is pretty nuts. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I, I think I might be under embargo for this right now, but the, uh, but, um, the upcoming uh, StarDock game, Elemental... Uh, does some that, stuff like that, that. The bar goes up on that. So oh, it is it okay. Yeah. Good. So yeah, the upcoming uh, Star Game Elemental is doing a really cool thing, where I don't think they have plans for like a specific paid marketplace or anything, but they do have an extremely awesome, ambitious uh, editor for their game, and it that allows you to basically modify any aspect of the game at all. I mean, you yeah. can import your own models from Maya or whatever. You can make your own textures. You can go in there and change all the game's uh, I think Python script. Um, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, they're they're saying you know theoretically, 
if you wanted to take our game Elemental and make Civ Five with it, you could you could do that. Um, they're really trying to just expose Crazy. every every layer of functionality, That's basically. Cool. That's I mean, really cool. Not making it open source, but you know, a few steps shy of that. It sounds like. Um, well, it's something like you cool. couldn't actually get into the core engine. Code, no, no, but... you couldn't. But you can change the scripting, the gameplay um, stuff. Yeah, right, it's interesting. Exactly, yeah, uh, they, their their goal basically is to make. Um, because this isn't really a thing that's been done very frequently. Their goal is to make the equivalent of a really versatile game engine, but specifically for strategy games. You know, whereas whereas most portable game engines that are made these days are, are intended for action games, right? Yeah. Um, they're trying to make one that that supports as many different facets of strategy games that's as cool. possible. That's probably people who are going to be really into that. Yeah, exactly. Although I wonder how much of that they're going to end up. I wonder how much Steamroll they're going to be by whatever the Starcraft. I know. I was just thinking yeah, about yeah. that. I was that's like, exactly yeah, what I'm wondering. Probably yeah. be some really ambitious yeah. people who are into that. Who but that said, nobody ever plays their stuff. There but. are worse things have happened than two companies trying sure. to do a really good job of right. putting out an exposed end user tool set. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Because if they awesome. both keep doing that, we'll end up with a good community. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and BattleNet in general is just it's a pretty it's a pretty cool interest well, it's a pretty interesting initiative overall. I mean, they're trying to basically one up Xbox Live. I mean, that's certainly the way Greg Canessa described it uh when I talked to him and uh he one of the things I asked him, you know, is this this must be it must feel different working between coming from a company where you you have to make this system that every developer on the platform has to use if they want to go online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everyone has to fit too, within yeah. it. And now you're making one where you're really only making it for yourselves, at least right now. It's Nick, it sounded like they you asked if they might extend it to other developers eventually. Yeah. Maybe yes. Uh it sounded like yeah, we're not saying today, but uh yeah, right. but at some point Well I and I also asked content. them, you know, about about consoles and, and and uh and maybe bring it to consoles in some kind of weird form and uh he was like, Well, you know, um how do I uh uh uh, and then at the at the very end of this long lengthy answer, he he said, "So anyway, um, yeah, I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, uh, we haven't really decided anything. I'm not really quite sure how that would work." And he's like, "Well, yeah, actually, I kind of am, but I'm not going to tell you." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I have um, a feeling I mean, that so I can't imagine that they're not planning for a lot of this stuff in the back of their minds. Yeah, I mean, was was the implication that it would not be surprising if at some point Activision, other Activision PC games, uh, ended yeah. up on there? I, well, you, oh, you said, I oh God, Activision, I could certainly see. I, mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it would be cool if that happened, but uh, I have a feeling that they actually are not focusing on. Uh, no, I don't think they are either. I mean, I think it's too. There doesn't seem to be a reason. To it's do that definitely right in now. the far back of their mind, right? But right, but prob- I, it's probably still something there. It's probably less far in the back of the mind of people on the Activision side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Bobby Kotick, it's right. all over his, his <laughs> yeah. mind. No, <laughs> Our own proprietary network. <laughs> Twelve right. million people, you say? <laughs> hmm, I, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe they all want skateboard controllers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! By the way, what if they'd subscribe to them? <laughs> by the way, fucking isn't it isn't it amazing that a week after Bobby Kotick is is called out for saying, uh, you know, if it was up to me, I'd just raise those prices even more. <laughs> A week later, it's like right. Call of Duty: Modern yeah, Warfare exactly. Two, first PC game to, yeah. to hit well, the sixty dollars. Yeah. So nice one, Kotick. Well played. You fooled yeah. us all. I love that we, he <laughs> he followed that that quote up with like, oh, you know, I'm just joking, whatever. Yeah, right. He's like, oh, yeah. are you? I don't know about, about that. Um, so that was fun. It's weird that those guys in Blizzard are the same company. Um, but I guess not that was, weird. Was, we got to buy StarCraft two three times. Was yeah. was an Acticon across the street? Uh, <laughs> uh, Acticon right, just, was not like present. a sad Wolfenstein and station. Then, yeah, sort of <laughs> like six people just sort of huddle like, around in the, it. Like. In the local barbershop is Vivindicon. <laughs> <laughs> just two guys yeah. on a Game Boy. We right. used to own Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they still do. Oh. We used to, we still do. Oh, <laughs> oh man, sorry. <laughs> Play Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, no. Blizzard Battle X sounds cool. Um, yeah. Oh, and so anyway, his answer was when I asked him that was, you know, yeah, now obviously the difference is you don't ever need to worry about, yeah. you know, someone's single player game requiring a leaderboard, even though right. that makes no sense or whatever. I mean, you know, it's they if the game doesn't. That's the worst thing ever, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Says, yeah. Says Jake. Yeah. Says, Single player game developer, tell two games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if a game doesn't need something, they just don't need to use it. And if a game does need something, they can just customize the system to just have it right there. I will so. say, in the case of Xbox Live Arcade, 
Maybe if your game doesn't have a multiplayer component, you could have not required a leaderboard for certification. That's a pretty simple workaround for that particular example. Don't have one. Jake's not bitter at all. No. That's, it's just goofy. I don't yeah. care. It's just, yeah. you know. Yeah. I love putting a leaderboard into an adventure game. <laughs> <laughs> who's, the, who's the number one? Yeah, uh, who's the leader? Who Wallace has, and Gromit player. I don't know. Some guy who's played it through a lot of times because we just tracked how many dialogue lines you've heard. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Nice. That's a hilarious. You have to have a leaderboard. Yeah. So if you just there's some guy just clicking on the is same the message one each time. Yeah, every time a dialogue line is exposed. <laughs> oh my some, god! Some guy just yeah. sits you can be the best it. walls and ground player in the hey, world. Hey Max, how are you doing? Hey Max, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, just like it's, yeah. anyway. Hey, but you know, if you if uh, Warcraft Adventures ever comes out, we won't have to worry about <laughs> oh that uh, issue on Battle.net. God, I was so sad when Warcraft Adventures was canceled. I was like genuinely. I was too. So I've been reading Although previews I go back and, and PC that, gamers for, kind of for years. Yeah, go back and look at it on YouTube. No, I you know, won't be so sad. But anyway, know, let's not talk about Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're making they're making games and uh, Battle.net for games, and yeah, it's definitely Nick and I had a huge discussion about about Battle.net and kind of the PC platform and 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 all this stuff. I don't know if we need to necessarily. Uh, no, we probably don't go need to go into it. Over it was a long, a brief recap? dorky discussion. Well, it was ba- as a recap, and and please stop me if I start going on too long enough but okay um basically we were just talking about the long-term future of battle.net and 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 the pc and sort of we were talking generally about the insular nature of blizzard you know they're they're very much a company that would create this ridiculously ambitious platform just for their three games uh you know it's uh, no one else really does that i mean ea's got EA online or whatever, but it's so bare bones yeah. compared to what this is. And um, I mean, Valve sort of had it when Steam first. Yeah, started. right. Val- right Valve right, is right. an example of the one who's, which is sort of going the more of the, X- the Xbox Live. Well, but that's more of the Xbox Live route where they're like, anyone can plug into this. Well, but and, it wasn't you know, originally that. Right, 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 right. Um, whereas Blizzard, I mean, this is already sounds kind of more crazy than Steam in a certain way. The difference is that Steam serves as a PC wide thing now, at least now, which is nice. Yeah. And Blizzard is the opposite. And I, we're talking about, you know, one, they've certainly got this captive audience now who, you know, you, you've got your friends list and then in, in world of Warcraft, and then you see a little icon that pops up that it's like, this guy in their guild is now playing Starcraft two. And, and the, the thought of that just bringing all these new people into Starcraft two and eventually Diablo three, which will certainly happen. Um, but, you know, I was talking about how I kind of, I do overall kind of prefer the valve approach, which is let's make this cool big hub where we can centralize this whole community of, of PC gamers and expose them to all these things from different developers right. and show them all this different stuff. And uh, it is funny just to hear the, the philosophical difference in the way Blizzard talks about things, you know, when they, they come right up front and are like, you know, just we are making the StarCraft stuff because we uh, don't want people making stuff for Steam. We want them making it uh, for our game. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I guess that's probably what Bungie everyone was thinks. was the same but... way before Xbox Live, actually, as well, with um, Myth and Marathon. And I th- did Oni have multiplayer? I don't remember if it did. I don't remember if it but they had yeah, Bungie.net, which was yeah. at the time yeah, sort of the true. Bungie yeah, parallel right. to yeah. Battle.net. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was the same thing where it was like all Bungie stuff, all of your myth ranks and your marathon ranking and stuff were all handled through that one. Well, Relic uh, kind of had that too, right? Do they? I don't know if they still do, but they had Relic online, right? Yeah. I, I don't remember what that. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think, but then like Bungie obviously is now all XBLA. They're not yeah, using yeah. that anymore. I mean, they're using and, the games for Windows and stuff like that. Yeah, Valve yeah, yeah. has opened up their platform, but Bungie, because they're Bungie. Right. Uh, is just instead they've decided to stick on the weird 90s branch but it's now like taken to the most extreme fucking maniacal extreme possible right, mm-hmm. right. which is weird but it's i don't know i don't mind that they're off doing that no no i don't mind either it's just it's just a uh, it's a difference in the especially on the pc which is obviously an open platform it it is there is just a different um uh spoken kind of tone you know every time you talk to valve Obviously, Valve wants people on Steam, and obviously, Valve wants to make money, and obviously, but you know, you talk to Valve, and they're like, "We're so excited about the PC, and we're so excited about this ecosystem, and here's these things why developers should be on this thing." Well, and then, probably because they're controlling it. I mean, if you're a company as big as Valve, but if they had not come up with Steam, they probably would have their own little insular network. Oh no, I know, but I just mean you can you can get uh, Valve to much more much more easily talk about the PC as a general platform. Yeah. And then you talk to Blizzard, and they're like, we, uh, "It's just, it's just, a, I don't know." There's I mean, sort yeah. of a difference in. Yeah, you were attitude. taking it to the extreme, though. I you was. were saying, "Like, man, in ten years, imagine a world no. where only Blizzard sits atop a pile of shit rubble. <laughs> the PC platform lies in ruins, and Blizzard rears its crown and laughs." <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was basically. I don't know if that's exactly what I was saying, but <laughs> it sounds uh, like what you'd say. <laughs> that was what I was saying. I. Uh, 
mainly because every other PC game is shit. <laughs> uh, no, um, but but I there is there is sort of a, a frequent, especially like in the gaming press, there is definitely an attitude of of like the PC is where the yeah. Blizzard games and the Valve games are, and I don't really think there's anything else there. Um, anyway, there those companies make PC games though. I mean, you you do get that kind of thing quite a lot. And uh, it is it can be frustrating, but yeah. what can you do? I guess I don't maybe know. they think that Valve makes everything that's on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There probably are people who I heard who they think did that. the PC port of the Civ games and XCOM. I mean, we get letters from people sometimes who think we make the games that we report on at Gamma Sutra. <laughs> so you, 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 the things people well, it starts to say the word game in the name of your site. It's true. Yeah. It so. does say GOM. So <laughs> did you make this video GOM? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that you did. <laughs> video GOMs. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> video games <laughs> yeah like legs yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah video games yeah we do get crazy letters from people who who are outraged about various things that we have nothing to do with it's weird oh and then sometimes people assume we make the game so they send us our their our, their game ideas they're like for your oh, next right. game it's weird that they'd go to the trouble of finding out our mailing address and not be able to realize we don't well you guys practice the art and science of making a game that's true i guess it does say that on our website Actually, it's the art and business now. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Was it ever science? Yep. Oh, really? That was a couple of years ago. But yeah, wow. it used to be the art and science, and now it's the art and business. Because we totally sold out to the man. Yeah. We did, apparently. Yeah, we did. It's lame. Yep. Change that. Uh, people complain about it all the time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm complaining. It's stupid. All right. I, I don't... It's not my decision. Um... Yeah, what are we talking about? I don't know. Battle Something. Net. We're talking Battle about the Blizz. Are yeah. we done talking about that stuff? I though? guess we're done with the Blizz. We could do Reader Mail for a minute. We could. We could do that. Or oh, we could oh, wait you know the what? Reader Mail Spectacular. I want to mention Mass Effect. Um, <sighs> oh, God, there's some other stuff we have to mention, too. But oh, really? my God. Yeah. Well, last week's episode was short and bad, so we can <laughs> we can maybe stretch right. this one out a little more. Um, the Adolf Thumbs Omnibus Spectacular. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm starting over Mass Effect yet again. You were killing like a million dudes earlier. I was killing a lot of dudes. Um, so I, it's, it looked like a pretty easy game actually when you were playing it just now. Yeah. So basically <laughs> every time we talk about Mass Effect and this has happened at least twice before, um, the feedback that we get the is feedback. always, the feedback we get is always either, man, you idiot, you suck at a video game and you can't believe you thought Mass Effect was hard at all. You big stupid douche. Like I hate you. Or, I mean, it's literally, people get aggressive about it. It's bizarre. Um, or Stupid I, games journalists can't play yeah, a exactly. game that's can't gotten play a challenge to it. Right. Or there was the feedback we get, and feedback. quite honestly, more of the feedback we get is, uh, yeah, man, completely true. I stopped playing that game after a few hours because it was frustrating and stupid. Um, it's because they were playing as a girl. <laughs> yeah, it turns out the female character <laughs> is completely like Age of Conan. Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's true in Age of Conan. It was for it a while was for because a the it's animation like speed was of, the animation speed was different, and since attacks actually like linked up to the animation yeah. speed, like on a per hit basis, the female character was actually weaker <laughs> on accident, and and people were so offended and pissed <laughs> off. How did you may not notice that? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, it's Age of Conan. Um, <laughs> apparently they've improved it recently. But I don't really know. You They're know, releasing a new expansion. expansion. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, Anyway, is that, so is that the Funcom one? It yes. is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and they are making another MMO, The Secret World. That's Ragnar Turnquist's game. Yes, the guy who did the uh, Longest Journey and Dreamfall. Um, anyway, where you fight monsters in your kitchen, right? That sounds like a Ragnar Turnquist it, game. It yeah. really does. Yeah, it is like super Ragnar Turnquist game. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, you'll be wearing your underwear at some point. In that you game. certainly will. Yes. So, uh, Mass Effect. Um, I'm pretty sure the thing. Okay, there there are probably other people who are just you know super good at, at these at these kind of games. But I think Boy, do you suck fr- at from this? what I can tell in general, based on the feedback and and Bang. some some other people have thanks, Jake. <laughs> some other people have I baby have I have hypothesized this is that your class choice makes a huge huge difference on how challenging the game is. And uh, I've always done the infiltrator class because my personal video game instincts are sniper. just like a super magnet yeah towards sniper rifles which i just enjoy using in games so much um but especially the the actual use of a sniper rifle in this game is so hilariously bad that it 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 just makes your character stupid and i i guess before i assumed there wasn't such a massive difference between the control mechanism for the sniper rifle and for the other guns i guess there is and i guess 
uh, it, this still exists on the Xbox 360 version, but I guess it's even more extreme on the PC version to try to compensate for mouse having aim. Have mouse aim, yeah. right? Which is obviously you can be super accurate with. Mm. And so they make the sniper rifle even more inaccurate to the point where it just, it just wildly swings around the screen. And you can either use that or your pistol, which is why would you play a sniper rifle class to use your pistol, which everyone has, or your assault rifle, which every single time you load it up, it's like, warning, your character doesn't know how to use this. And so the <laughs> game is ob is basically encouraging you to use this shitty, shitty weapon that, I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, and so I started over yet again. This is the third time of, no, fourth time, if you count the original time I played. Fourth time in total, I've started over Mass Effect, um, having, completed it, having completed it once, and uh, I started with the soldier character, which every single person who says, uh, whoever, who mentions class in their response, they always say, oh, just do soldier. That one's easy. I think that's how I played it first, yeah. And uh, yeah, they're right. It's fucking way easier. So I think the class balance in this game is just terrible. It's Case just closed. Well, I, I hope so. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I haven't, obviously I haven't gotten that far yet. I only just restarted today. So, I mean, hopefully case closed. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't have any problems like that. So, yeah. So. Uh, it's it it seems like a massive oversight. But I'm not a baby. I guess you're not a baby. Um, I don't the know. The thing we need to mention was um. Uh, oh, oh, and you know, are, are you finished? Well, no, but you know what frustrates <laughs> me though. You know what frustrates me is I bet that they've taken this this uh, feedback to heart. I there's no way to ignore it. And I bet in Mass Effect Two, the sniper will not be infuriating to play. But now. You know, I either have to play through, like, now that I've started a new character, I either have to play through the whole thing with the shitty thing so that I've got the good save with the sniper to get ready for what I hope is oh, a better sniper in Mass Effect 2, carry over, or right? yeah. I play through it with an easy class, the soldier, and then by the time I get to Mass Effect 2, I don't get access to what I hope will be a cool character. So, that's irritating, but I would rather have the non-frustrating experience now, so I'll probably yeah. just play the soldier. Um, anyway, God, Mass Effect. It... it uh, <laughs> I don't mind that I have to keep starting over this game because the beginning of the game really is amazing. The I best. mean, it really yeah. is the best. Um, there are so many things they do well, and it is so cool at the beginning. Um, we every time I every time I talk about it, there's new cool stuff. Like we were talking about at the beginning. Did you get pretty far with your sniper recently? Well, I got to the first. Yeah, you got I mean, to the part I, where you were frustrated, right? So, so I, a, <laughs> no, I was like a good. It was yeah. No, I played oh, for several hours, but oh, that's that's fun. Whatever. This, the only stuff I get to replay <laughs> is the stuff that's really good. So yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so you live in denial for a couple more yeah, hours. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I've got time. This game's not out until Mass Effect Two's not out until next year. So right. Whatever. And they did recently confirm Xbox 360 and PC will come out on the same day. Yeah, so that's cool. That was nice. Oh, new patch, Mass Effect 1, PC, finally. This patch they've been promising for months finally exists. Um, <laughs> I just remembered. I didn't have any... It fixed a whole bunch of shit that I didn't have problems with. We're in the with, new section of the did. Mass Effect podcast. I know. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sorry. I'll cut it off now. Um, <laughs> patch. Patch. You can, you can download it. It's kind of hidden, but... Uh, I think Nick, you put a story Search up on Shack News, right? I did, yeah. yeah so if you go to Shack News, you can find a link to it. Yeah. How about that that little pitch there? Patch pitch. Yeah. Let's pitch, pitch patch. We'll take another break and I'll line up some mail and then we'll come back and record. Oh, it. I just we. Oh we, yeah, go we ahead. Uh, I don't want to talk, want to talk about any video gums, but I want to talk about uh, <laughs> idle, uh, idle thumbs uh, meetups. We should mention. Oh yeah, we we we, uh, we actually met some real people who we, listen we to our podcast. Some, they exist. There are at least yeah. a few people. Who save this for reader mail. Way before we talk about our readers. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah. I guess it does sort of fit. That's <laughs> no, fine. Well, whatever. We we've already started. So so we <laughs> this train's rolling. We did. Yeah, oh, you can't stop the reader train. <laughs> um, yeah, we put out a, a, an extremely last minute uh, a tweet Twitter post, a right? final tweet advertising our presence yeah, at Blizzard. The but, worst uh, way, by the way, because the the. 3G network and all the cell networks were completely oh, yeah, they destroyed get overloaded with these things now. during BlizzCon. So it was the absolute worst way to broadcast the existence of, well, a, of a meetup. But maybe slightly less worse than holding up a sign saying idle thumbs and walking around. It was weird though. I mean, well, I think people. That would have been cool. People recognized if any, if us. If anyone actually. <laughs> you know how people recognize us? We were underneath the Diablo sign. Yeah. <laughs> they probably re like, oh, oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. Well, and then also, it was so funny the way the first guy, like before. Uh, because at, at a certain point we at least had a critical mass of five of us total, but yeah. you know, at uh, <laughs> yes. when the first guy, when the first guy, uh, well, we had two meetups over two days, and there were different people each time. Yeah. But um, but anyway, um, the first guy found us because we were talking about Monkey Island two, and he's oh, like, right. "Oh man, Monkey Island two, are you guys idle thumbs?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> we were like, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty funny. Um, anyway, we met some dudes, and they were really cool. Yeah, they were all really cool. Yeah, they were. 
Um, they were not at all scary, weird dudes like the guy who called us on the phone. Yeah, no suckbox <laughs> guys or anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, it was cool. So we're going to PAX in a few weeks and hoping to uh, get something slightly more advanced planned out where we yeah. can meet up with a bunch of dudes. At least at least two of us will be there, possibly all three of us. If possibly. Yeah, if Jake, Jake and I are going. Together. We're trying yeah. to pressure Guilt Nick into going. Yeah. So uh, you guys can all write in or send messages. <laughs> we're trying to pressure Guilt Nick into going. His nickname is Guilt. He's Guilt Nick Brecken. Guilt Nicholas Brecken. Yeah. So we're trying to pressure old Guilt Nick into going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to PAX, we will we'll be walking around PAX. Yep. And or I'll be sitting behind the table at the Telltale booth. Right. Yep. But I'll be saying idle thumbs every about 25 seconds. So And video games. Actually, the, one of the guys who came up to us introduced himself just by saying video, video games. games. So that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that, was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty weird. So that's, our, that's the official... Uh, if, you, if you're wondering who is from idle thumbs at PAX, just walk around to people saying video games. And if one of them, <laughs> if one of them responds by saying... Video games? Video by games? saying video games, then you'll know that they're an idle thumbs listener. Right. We have, we have lots of listeners you'll find. Yeah. Or they'll just say, yeah, this is the video games conference. Yep. <laughs> right. right. But You're that correct. includes the words video games. So, right. so, so you know they Idle must Thumbs. listen to Idle Thumbs. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, we'll try, we'll try to tell you guys sooner than the day of that time. Um, yeah. Watch all of Twitter for someone mentioning Idle Thumbs. <laughs> right. <laughs> just do a, a Twitter search for Idle Thumbs. Or for PAX. For, for PAX. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> now we're going to take a break and get some reader mail and come back. Yeah. I think you're the one, the one guy... Uh, who kept pointing out like our inadequacy in 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 basically doing everything thumbs related? What, just basically like, why don't you guys just go on other podcasts? Why not? Right. Why don't yeah. you just? Why yeah. don't you just announce that you're going to PAX ahead of time? Yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you just make a better podcast? Why don't you just? Why don't? Why don't yeah. you do this? And we're like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we're just making this up yeah. every week. Yeah. We don't know yeah, what we're, we're doing. Talking about how we God, like, he was just how, like, like nobody listens to our podcast, yeah. and he's like, well, why don't you just do this and this and this and this? Yeah. this? and we're like, we don't think of things. Yeah, <laughs> Shut we up. need to hire that guy as like our podcast manager. Yeah, I guess he's our community manager. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. He listed off like ten different things too. I know, he's like, I know. he's like, why don't you? Why don't you? Wait, why just... did you just start it again? We're recording still. Oh, <laughs> I guess. I mean, <laughs> video game. All right, so we're gonna we're back, and we're gonna kick it off with some five five wizard on. That's our voicemail line five five wizard on, and uh, call and leave us something. Yeah, here's the first one. Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Great, so, so now let's do some uh, reader mail. Yeah. Moving right along here. Um, we haven't done reader mail in a while. We're probably going to do a uh, standalone An all mail cast. read blast of some kind in the relatively near future because we've got a lot of good mail and we uh, never have enough time to do it all. Um, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> first off, oh, but okay, so yeah, like I sort of alluded to earlier, a lot of mail we got in the last week or so was people talking about mass effect basically and <laughs> i forgot not only was it a class thing people also said specifically and uh, nick i think you mentioned this specifically that particular planet the ice planet which is the first one i went to you it's you kind of just choose arbitrarily there isn't really any prompting as to yeah. where you should go next after the citadel um that is apparently the most difficult one yep by a fairly significant margin a guy said even when he went through it and did did it last it was still <laughs> still the most difficult <laughs> Jake's got the cop glasses back on. Yeah. Um, he's, he's always so sitting smooth in front when of he puts those mustache. on. <laughs> yeah. He never drops any pens or anything. So I won't read all of them. I'll just read one of them as an example. So Chris, super you are the best at Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, Super Slug. I mean, this is this is very similar to many other emails we got. He says, I think the cakewalk versus difficult combat is heavily based on class. I played through three times as a biotic, then a soldier, and then a tech, and it was amazing how much easier the, t the soldier was to play than the other classes. The particular fight you mentioned was tough, but I didn't find it that horrendous. The first time I played, so this even I'm a baby compared to this guy. The first time I played the Benezia section, however, took me hours. I think that I just got is... used to going into combat and having the sidekicks drop dead. Yeah, that was exactly my problem. See, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe the game would be better if a baby could play it. Uh, <laughs> also, I love the podcast. Thanks for reading Super Slug. So, so right. Yep. Um, exactly. Yeah. Hendo writes. Hello, a couple of friends have recommended the Idle Thumbs podcast, but warned me that there are a few in-jokes and catchphrases I might not get, so I might want to go back a few shows. Not one to do this by halves. Two days ago, I started right back at episode number one, and I'm currently up to number 11, back from December last year. Wow, so in like a month, this guy will hear his... his right, yeah, his that's actually kind of weird. ...thing yeah. being read. Yeah, that's strange. 
Um, it's a great show you guys do, and I thought it'd be cool to have a shout out on the next show, a shout out on the next show, and I'll let you know when I get that far. All right, so he okay, so that's what he wants. To yeah, happen. yeah. Um, and keep, just keep 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 uh, mentioning this guy through every episode. <laughs> right, just leave the nuggets for hey, him. Hey, episode right. forty now, like the like breadcrumb trail, just for <laughs> right. this dude. Yeah. yeah, we'll have our our uh, weekly uh, Andy Henderson update. Yeah, um, so He'll win every contest. <laughs> right, won't exactly. know it. <laughs> right, I submitted my little big planet <laughs> yeah. level. So uh, we need the person who won this to respond within uh, yeah, right. about a day, yeah. um, and then we'll uh, get your prizes sent right off for you. You guys never read my Ultra Boost flavors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I um, I called you in, read Ultra Boost flavors. Yes, when I was a kid, I uh, I was uh, you know listening to the radio late at night, and um, and they it was a you know some DJ or whatever was on and they were taking requests and stuff. And I called in and, uh, they didn't pick up the phone for like five minutes, literally. And I just sat there ringing it. And finally someone picked up and, uh, and they're like, hello. And I'm like, hi, I, uh, I'd like to request a song. And they're like, there's no one on right now, dude. It's a recording. It's, we don't broadcast this late at night. I'm just like hanging out here cleaning up and stuff. And I was so sad because the guy was just berating me. And it was the first time I'd ever called into a radio station to request something. And I just got totally shot down. Yeah. So, sad. yeah. So maybe someone can do that to us and we'll just poop on their heads somehow. Um, We've probably done that already. So anyway, he continues, in keeping with the catchphrases I've learned so far, oh god, <laughs> I'd like to say that I've been tra- playing Trials HD and it's pretty sweet. In oh. fact, I would go so far as to say it has, caps, blown me away <laughs> to seg, have you guys got any hot scoops on Wizards? <laughs> Thanks for providing my soundtrack to me falling off a digital, Jake is dying here, yeah. to me falling off a digital motorcycle, Andy Henderson, North Wales, UK. And then he's got a quote here. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So think about that. Oh. Interesting. Um, Jake is Jake is cracking up here. He's holding it in, but he's dying. Jake finds any mention of an Idle Thumbs catchphrase to be instantly hilarious. Right. In so. fact, if you go to PAX, I think all you should do is... Uh, Follow Jake around saying those catchphrases. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he loves that. It's Jake's favorite, on favorite thing. He'll probably give you something for that. I'll give you a hint as to where I'm coming from here. It was my original goal that we would be wizard-free in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. 2009 is the year of the wizard. <laughs> Actually, the year of the wizard has been pushed back into 2010. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine what that will be like now that you've experienced the first eight months of this year. I know. Um, <sighs> he mentions Trials HD. It's, uh, I actually have been playing... Uh, the PC game on which that was based because I bought it a while Trials ago. PC. Trials 2 Second Edition. Mm. And uh, I, I bought it. It was on sale in the oh, Steam sale oh, yes. last This uh, is what I had to remember. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, I, well, I'll just this is say, the ticket. Yes. I bought it last December. <laughs> put this podcast back on top. Yeah. We got, we got up ghost. to page two on, it- on, the, uh, top ghost. <laughs> on the iTunes Video Games Podcast page. Sweet. Oh, yeah. So you should all that. go there and review our If you want to review Idle Thumbs, we would love a review, positive yeah. or negative. You can talk about how we just say babu all the time and <laughs> put the board with the baby sample all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you were really bored last week. <laughs> well, yeah. Last week, we were all on about four hours of sleep. And Jake, probably less than that. Jake and I was editing yeah. the podcast after missing a bus and getting back to my apartment at about 2 30 a.m and then editing a podcast and so uh it was a trying time but uh it was a trial hd it was a trial hd i might have my brain might have been in in wacky mode for a minute for a while but uh, anyway so trials 2 is what i've been playing and then you can buy it on xbox 360 as trials hd yeah that's where um, i bought it the yeah. reason i've just been playing it is because i had it and everyone's been talking about it now because trials right. hd is out that game is hard as shit it's fun. I haven't gotten to the hard part, I suppose. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty hard. It's yeah. fun though. It's weirdly fun. Yeah. Um it's a weird concept. It's like a motorcycle side scroller where you have oh, to do crazy game. tricks. Yeah. It it seems very strongly based on a game I used to play in DOS. It was exactly the <laughs> Holy same. shit! Oh, man, yes! yes! <laughs> oh man! Oh, no. <laughs> Nick! Jake and I just saved Nick's goddamn Christmas. Did you Jake, hear Jake that? and Nick are embracing in a field oh, like with string music everywhere. <laughs> They're giving each other high fives. They're smiling. You know that it's fucking, a, it's what a was glorious. It I don't know. Friends. That's what I was gonna ask. I need. I need the, I need the like a cross or something like that. It had some name very similar to that. God, man. I will find it. I went through the exact same thing. Yeah, I looked at that thing. And I was like, man, this game is just like yeah, a game that, I played. It's that, that physics-driven um, motorcycle game. Uh, what was it called? Oh man. 
Yeah. Man, this is, this is, you guys yeah, just no, no, no. exploded. It's, it is, it's the exact same thing where it's like, the, the, it has the gravity of the moon yeah. and your motor's yeah. like going off the moon. Crazy. Well, look, see, see it's, it's actually, yeah, that's why I know it's the exact same game because, because that game did have the gravity of the moon. Trials is not quite as, as, as yeah, crazy. But it, I it did still, have the gravity I've moon. been watching people do the thing that where you go up the cliff and the motorcycle just falls over and once the guy's head touches the ground, boom, right. you're dead. Yes. Yeah. Does, does trials have the thing where you can make the wheels all big for no reason and stuff? <laughs> yeah, that was right. Oh my god! No, it doesn't. I don't think. God, these Maybe guys are like having a, a moment right now. I'm just. Oh Jesus! And also, since nobody can tell you two guys apart, they're all just gonna. <laughs> <I know. laughs> One guy's having a crazy schizophrenic uh, episode. Oh, god. god, I wish I remember the name. There of are a million game. of those games now. Is the problem? There, I, I looked. I, I did a search, and there's just like a thousand dirt bike games. All right, well, we're gonna crowdsource the shit yeah. out of this one. If so anybody if knows, knows, I mean, we may find it before then. Maybe Jake just found it. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, Maybe. anyway, so th- this particular game. Yeah, it's called Action oh. Supercross or Across.exe. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I remember referring to games Shit, by that .exe. Was it. Found it. That anyway. was it. Oh, I just closed it. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. I about reopened it. it. Man, that's like when I used to refer to Star Control 2 as Starcon.exe. Yeah, or dot. That stuff was all great. Yeah. But yeah, so man. it's very, very, very reminiscent of Action Supercross yeah. for DOS. Yep. Crazy. God, I used to play the shit out of that game. I know. So good. I, oh, man. That like, was... there were times when we would we would be at a LAN party, and it would actually just devolve into everyone, for some reason, running that game. Oh, because you can make levels for it. Right, you can make you levels, can for, it and, levels for yeah, it, and then just fuck yeah. people up. Oh. That's all I did in computer class. It's just like, because <laughs> it was basically a LAN, and we just sat there. So anyway, and, yeah. now I had forgotten about that, and now I'm going to go home and download Trials HD. Because <laughs> I had forgotten yeah. that that was this game. Yeah. yeah. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, this Action is out. Super you can get it on uh, Steam or Xbox Live, <laughs> and it's pretty crazy and fun. Yeah. It's a fun game. It's yep. a fun video game. Um, and it does get pretty goddamn hard, but uh, it's kind of the point of it. Um, uh, and you know what? Actually, this is double seg here, because the guy asked for a wizard seg, and oh, you guys oh, yeah, just here freaked we go. out over weird <laughs> precursors to things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Action Supercross. I know. Hey, <laughs> Cross. Oh, good old uh, Cross. <laughs> Nick and I we we spent some a little bit of time before the uh before the thumb meet at uh at Blizzard um BlizzCon, oh, I'm sorry. At the Blizz. At the Blizzard yeah. the Blizzard convention. Uh they should just call it the Blizzard convention. Yeah. We were blizzing. Uh at the, the Blizzard, Blizzard collection. Retro Arcade, I think it was called, or Classic Arcade. Yeah, they call it Retro Arcade. Did you guys yeah. play a Lost Viking? Uh, for like a minute. Yeah, yeah. we played like yeah, a minute please. of Blackthorn. And we, like, the, the, the most we played was uh, Warcraft Orcs Warcraft and Humans. Warcraft 1, Orcs and Humans, which I, I played a lot of in Night. I did as well, yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, did you play that, Jake? Yep. Wow, I wouldn't have thought that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I played a lot of Warcraft 1 and some Warcraft 2 and okay, Command cool. & Conquer 1 and Dune 2, and then that was the end of my time. Right, playing. right, right, okay. So I, I logged on. I logged on to Battle.net once with StarCraft. And decided that I was done with. <laughs> oh, we forgot. Games. We forgot to talk about um, that aspect of Battle.net. They they actually specifically brought that up a good deal at, at like several times in different Battle.net people. Battle.net will oh. no longer rape you. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. Join. Well, they talked about how damaging <laughs> an experience that is for people to. Yeah. They go through single player and they're that like, made, all right, I know how to play StarCraft that made me now. Stop playing real time right. strategy games, basically. And I and I think like, a lot I can of people never get good yeah. enough at this game. Ever yeah, but now they're going to be like a million different leagues of all sorts of difficulty, and then there will be also you know standard matchmaking. A noob league. Yeah, well, in the match, the other thing about the matchmaking, fine. though, there'll be there won't be what they what they call smurfing, which is people won't be able to create a new account, uh, and then you know thereby resetting their uh, their wins loss right. ratio. So that how do you not do that? Yeah, how do you keep? I don't know how they're actually going to because it's that. all tied to that unified uh, uh, BattleNet account. If someone really doesn't care about their unified BattleNet account, they can still make a new. You'd one. You'd have to buy another copy of the game. Really, they're tying it to a CD key. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't buy the game. You can't create a a a you know seven different BattleNet accounts and then just sign into that BattleNet account and have StarCraft on your on your thing. You register all your games with your unified account. Well, you could just buy another copy. Well, I guess you could buy another copy of the game, but I mean, is that's there, the only thing you could you're, do. You're a smurfing copy, but you would have to buy copies for yeah. every. Right. I mean, that would be so fucking insane. Yeah, so that's true. Okay, so yeah, they're doing that, and I I love the idea of the leagues, like the different divisions and stuff, because while it's certainly you know, oh, that sounds good. It, it is obviously maybe initially a little demeaning to do that. No, Imagine how cool it is if you can move up to a to a higher level yeah, league. No, good. Like that's rad. Totally approved. Um. Yep. Okay. So wizard. Um. Wizard seg. Yes. Uh. We we were go we. 
<laughs> we were playing some Warcraft I'm laughing one, about this. And this is a game Man. that I, you know, I guess all we, of us well, played okay, a We lot should of. preface this by saying that we had just played StarCraft 2. Yeah, we had just played StarCraft 2. So we were going 2. back in time. We were going from, like, the most polished yes. take on the base building We were RTS. going from, like, the Ferrari to the Model T, basically. Right, exactly. Was, uh... And this game has no right-clicking. Yeah. Uh, it has no drag select. Right. Um, it, you, it, to scroll, you can't just move the mouse to a side of the screen. You have to click on the side of the screen. Yeah. Um, what else? I don't know. It, it's archaic in every respect. You know, I mean, it was. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it was amazing. The it pathing was one those, is hilarious. The pathing is awful. Yeah. Uh, the AI is You almost can select three guys who are, you know, basically in a huddle. Right. C- click on a point for them to move and then they will split up and diverge. And <laughs> right. Go like everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing too. It's, it's, it's incredible because it, it, it was a long time ago, but really it was only 15 years ago, you know, and 15 yeah. years ago, I was playing that game and being completely blown away by yeah. it. I mean, I, I played that game with direct modem connection to my buddy yep. in multiplayer and we had a blast. I think we played that with two computers over a null modem cable. Actually. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the, just, I'm going to derail this briefly, but yeah, the ahead. difference between Starcraft or between Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2 is like night and day. And it was I know. Huge it difference. was Warcraft amazing. Was like, okay, I see where yeah. every Blizzard game came from. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, yeah, Warcraft well, one is well, Starcraft was another one of those though, because Starcraft was where they moved from the mirrored races, where the two sides were identical the, with sprite swaps, to the three balanced factions, which was a he- like a revelation for, yeah. for Blizzard. Yeah. Um, but uh, those were all. Well, I mean, wasn't CNC already doing that a little bit with? Yes. The yeah. GDI? Yeah. Yeah. CNC. CNC was, but uh, yeah. But from like from Warcraft two, Starcraft was a pretty huge huge yeah. upgrade. Um. Anyway, uh. So what we're actually meant to talk about here. Is, uh, is the wizard. So uh, I loaded up the orc <laughs> campaign and Nick loaded up the uh, human campaign. And the orc campaign um, was whatever. And they've got, it had a really classic intro cinematic that I, that I remembered yeah, shockingly yeah, yeah. clearly with the orcish hordes, yeah. <laughs> yes. the cheesy ass voice actor. Um, but the one Nick loaded up. And I think the first or second scene. It's the, I think it's just the first. The first that, yeah. scene. There's a none scrolling other, text and then behind this. None yeah. other. A wizard. A wizard. A fucking a classic wizard. wizard. A classic with like a wizard. Huge, like, with a huge, like, white beard, beard like a and spindly beard. a blue, beard. pointy hat. Stars yeah. and moons on the hat, perhaps? I think he had, like, a like a, like a, a pipe. Like just a wizard. Yeah. Just sort of sitting yeah. there stroking his beard. Oh, yeah. He was a cool thing. wizard, just hanging yeah. out, doing the wizard thing. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty amazing. We took a picture of it. Although, I don't know what the point that of that game was. was all probably a million screenshots yeah. available. That game was more about wizardry than... Uh, than, than it than... was. There were, there was the the could, Warcraft like, universe was less ridiculous in those days than it is now. Yeah, yeah. It was well, yeah. It was like sort of just standard fantasy yeah. stuff. Yeah. As it, well, well, well it's but the of, orcs, it's, it's still sort of standard it is. Fantasy but stuff, the but orcs, it was it was that sort of core, like oh, there are wizards and orcs and right. you know just kind of right. goofy. Now there's shit. NPCs named like Ringo Starr and shit, yeah. which I hate. Yeah. I hate all that crap. Like I don't. I'm not a big fan of just straight generic fantasy stuff either. But I mean. If you're gonna do some some goofy shit, I'll take that over. I'll take that and the orc saying zug zug yeah, over for sure. You know, just the the idiotic, never ending, stupid pop culture puns they have in World of Warcraft now, which I think is just garbage. Um. Anyway, uh. So that was Warcraft one. It was amazing to play that for multiple reasons, and uh, makes it really makes you appreciate how quickly games have iterated in in a relatively short period of time. Yeah. All, all things considered. Yeah. Um, more reader mail. And how about that for a wizard seg? I mean, that was pretty expert. We weren't planning yeah, that at no, all. That, that guy, was, uh... we just read that mail. And uh, All right. So uh, we are the wizard experts. We are. Nick Beers writes, hi, Idle Thumbs crew. I was the second guy that called in on the most recent podcast, and I'd like to say thanks for putting me on. It's an odd feeling hearing your own voice come through your speakers while, while playing bad flash games. I found it awesome that Google transcribed me in a humorous manner. Also, I'm a business and administration major, and inevitably I have to take finance courses from a major. So now I only think about Final Finance, the game I invented and not really want to play. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for coming off as a complete inarticulate moron who loves Final <coughs> Finance 10. Uh, thanks for a great podcast. You guys get me through a long commute. Nick Beers, yes, that is my real last name. You have no idea how many professors and fencing tournament officials have thought it was a joke. P.S. This, yes, that was your podcast on in the background of my call. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Speaking of crazy last names, Sarah yeah. McCarrigan. Sarah McCarrigan. Oh my God. So <laughs> we are the Seg Lords. So, yeah. uh, Seg Lord. Uh, the um, what's her face lady from Battlestar Galactica Yo, got Trisha Helfer. Is, Trisha was Helfer. Announced I always think the, her uh, name is Trisha Heifer, like or like yeah, by Heifer, Heifer, like a cow. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway. Um, so uh, she was announced as the new voice of Kerrigan 
in Starcraft 2. Yes. And the old lady who I guess her name was um, Glennis Talkin, I think. Right. She is now apparently like a romance novelist. She writes romance and fantasy novels. Yeah, yeah. And in the, like in the last – and she has <laughs> been – I guess she was campaigning heavily to to come back and be Kerrigan in StarCraft 2 because most – it seems like most of the major voice actors are actually returning. Yeah. Uh, it seems like they pretty much are bringing most of the people back. Not her and that's been known for a while I guess and so she's been trying to get back in. And most recently she changed her actual name to Sarah McCarrigan. <laughs> And her character's name was Sarah Kerrigan. So that's... Uh, Sarah McCarrigan? Sarah yeah. McCarrigan. Jake had a really disgusted look on I guess she's Irish. Face. So... Uh, that's odd. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's very weird. It is pretty weird. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Jake, Jake, just looks, Jake just looks baffled and, yeah. and disgusted. <laughs> that seems like a weird thing to do, especially if you're already a published novelist. Right. You don't change your name at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Your name goes on your book. You don't change it to a well, StarCraft Well, now right? she's, uh, her upcoming book is, we'll say Sarah McCarrigan on it. That's, which is pretty, <laughs> Jake, Jake looks totally, <laughs> completely baffled here. Um, All right. Okay. So, uh, moving on. <laughs> Paul, Paul Davis writes, uh, dear video games. Hello. I recently took a trip with my video. <laughs> I forgot that was you. Uh, <laughs> dear video games, I recently took a trick, trip with my girlfriend to romantic Newfoundland, and we ended up on a whale and puffin watching tour. Holy shit! Wait, where is he? Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, why? What? <laughs> oh, I thought that sounded no, 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 like no, what? what? Boobin lube. I was like, watching what? a show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, go ahead, Nick. No, I was watching a show once, and they were in Iceland and, and hunting puffin. And, oh, really? Yeah, and the puffins were just sort of flying around the cliffs, and they were just. You know, picking them off basically one by one. Jesus, uh, like, like puffin, a shotgun. And then they ate puffins. You just, you just they made a shotgun the they grilled motion. Them. Were they using shotguns? Yeah, they were. Using, yeah, like That's massive up. guns. Just sort of sitting there picking them off one by, and then just and then they them ate on a them? grill. And, so anyway, yeah. that was this guy. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was, right. He was, right. It's so easy that he was shooting them from Paul the, Davis, the puffin hunter. Yeah. Remember that game, Merv Griffin ba- or Mace Griffin, bounty hunter. Remember that game, Turn Dinosaur that was, Hunter. <laughs> 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 All right, so I chose one slightly more obscure. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter was always a game that it was like the movie you always see in Blockbuster every time you're in there, but you never it's like rent the it. The Adventure of Remo Williams. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. <laughs> it is like that. Um, uh, I never played Merv, uh, Mace Griffin. Uh, uh, Merv Griffin. I always want to. Yeah, that's always yeah, my like, brain I'll thinks when it one. sees the game box. Um, anyway. So, to continue this guy's mail, he says, uh, we ended up on a whale and puffin watching tour. The whales were pretty cool, but I was obviously most excited to see the puffins. (laughs) I love that that's obvious. Yeah. I thought it might warm your hearts to know that (laughs) that I had said puffins enough by the time we boarded the boat that Kate, my girlfriend, had started saying it too, complete with silly puffin voice. Yeah. Man, there are two ways that could have gone with you being with your girlfriend and saying puffins in an Ed Wynn voice nonstop. (laughs) And you're lucky the direction it went is that your girlfriend also started saying it because... That could have been bad. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm writing this from a train station. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a picture of a puffin burrow where the puffins burrow their homes. A Even lot of them. On a tour. <laughs> a lot of them yeah. are just hanging out outside. Also, maybe you already knew this fact, but puffins mate for life until one or two of them are eaten by a seagull. <laughs> Neat. Another fact I learned on this tour is that 1.5 million birds on one small island smells like bird shit. It's <laughs> a good fact. This is a great read of mail. Uh, I'm also is, including a picture of us at a lighthouse because I thought you might like to know what your friends in Wisconsin look like. Sincerely, your friend in Wisconsin. And then he <laughs> includes uh, a picture of the puffins as well as the picture of the lighthouse. As, so we will put those on the forums and everyone can see what our friends in Wisconsin and puffins look like. <laughs> this is a great piece of mail. I like This that. is a really good piece of mail. I, good job, we Paul Davis. It's like that offbeat stuff, you know? Yeah. It doesn't always have to be about video uh, gums. Yeah. <laughs> video gums. Yeah, um, Jeremy Fenwick the science and art of says, greetings. Recently, you talked about the role of cutscenes in games, and I agree that for the most part, they're awful. That raises a question, though. What about the Metal Gear Solid series? That has to be the absolute worst defender, and yet the series gets nothing but adulation from players. Considering the plots are convoluted, excessively self-indulgent, and mostly terrible. Self-indulgent. Uh, they have dungeons. <laughs> How do you defend the two-hour cutscenes that go on in games like Metal Gear Solid 4, or none of you even like the series? Cheers, Jeremy. How do you defend those, Chris? This yeah. might be the, the who, only who game will podcast them? you can listen to where most of us don't like yeah. Infinite Metal cutscene. Gear. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nobody here is going to stand up and... I... Uh, I didn't think Metal Gear Solid 4 is that good. I will say, I think... Oh. 
I think the cutscenes in Metal Gear Solid, in the first Metal Gear Solid, were, were I thought they were fine. They were fine. They they were pretty pretty much fine. I mean, the cutscenes in all the Metal Gear games are well made for video game cutscenes. Well, I don't know. I, mean, I think they get pretty fucking boring. They get honestly. pretty. I mean, they're they're dungeoned. yeah, they're pretty unnecessary a lot in many cases, and I find the writing to be really really ridiculous yeah. to the point where it just it just gets distractingly stupid but um i i do think hideo kojima has a great mind for video games and a bad mind for making movies and i wish he would stop trying to do the latter mm, yeah. um, i really think that guy mm. does some of the absolute most clever stuff in terms of weird like messing with uh the designer's hand uh in a game i i think he does an excellent job when that's what he's trying to do of just i don't know you know what i like about Toy, cutscenes toying with the relationship of the player to the matter go ahead you know what i when i don't mind a cutscene what's that is is an example of uh, of something like starcraft actually where the cutscene is meant to be just sort of this entirely separate thing showing you a slice of something that's going on that may not really be all that relevant to what your character is supposed to be doing or what what the main story is but just something like this was, as this a slice of tone. Basically. Well, yeah, I mean, like the equivalent now in StarCraft Two is you have like a video monitor and you can choose to click on it and watch right. something that's going right, on right, in the right. universe. I agree with that. When it's something yes. that is just you know additive rather than necessary to the story, right. that's fine. Like yeah. I don't mind at all. Um, well, but, you know, because when the, it's just yeah, yeah, and and a big part of that is because you de- you then don't have that disassociative problem where you end up seeing your character yeah, yeah, exactly. do a bunch of shit yeah. that you just cannot do in the game. It ends yeah. up... I, I can't stand that. I mean, we talked about that it's before. It's pretty much the opposite of like a Final Fantasy cutscene. Yeah, or Metal Gear Solid for that matter. Oh, right. Metal Gear Solid, yeah. you watch all these characters that you play and sometimes, that, sometimes you control uh, in ways that ha- have nothing to do with what they can do in the cutscenes. Yep. I mean, it's just... It makes me feel like an idiot. I'll watch a cutscene of of snake just doing the most amazing shit or someone else doing the most amazing shit and you get into the game and it's like oh okay i guess i can just kind of run and then crouch on a thing i guess actually i'm hilariously clumsy and have to hide in a trash can for five minutes after right. accidentally setting off an alarm like it, it just it really drives home the the difference between the story that the designers using to tell a game and what the game itself is actually doing and i i think that's just not a good way for video games to go but i do think Outside of, of those cutscene things, Hideo Kojima has, has absolutely great things to contribute to games. And I just, I wish he personally would rein himself in a bit. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. just focus more on that kind of stuff. Cause I think some of it's brilliant. I've, I've talked about it before. The Metal Gear Solid 3 ladder thing, one of my favorite moments in any game ever. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I think it's brilliant. I loved it. Um, and there's a lot of stuff all throughout that series that's really interesting. And I, I really think. He just sabotages himself with unnecessary crap. Um, and Nick, what you were saying about StarCraft 2, you know, my favorite example of that possibly ever, and it's another Blizzard game, is Diablo 2. Yeah. I think we talked about this before. Oh, have we? Okay, never mind then. But yeah. Actually, yeah. That was, <laughs> How the yeah. cutscenes are a different guy. Than they yeah, are a different yeah. guy, and they're also your character from Diablo 1. Yeah, yeah we talked about And they have a parallel story that you're following. It's yeah. brilliant. Anyway, yeah. um, so that's cool. So that's how we feel about that, I guess. Right. <laughs> yep. There, there was also there was some other some other actual gameplay stuff in Metal Gear Solid Four that I thought was great. I thought the first act of the game was really good. Yep. 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 Um, I thought there was some cool stuff near the end in terms of callbacks to previous games. I thought the concepts of the of some of the flawed areas were sound, but man, like like the, like the, the, the British the British sort of thing where you're running around and I can't remember exactly where you're running around in London and you're sort of disguised and I can't really remember uh-huh. what the Anyway, I thought that was a really cool area. Yeah, that but was actually a pretty decent section. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't it know. It had I think kind of a hook to it, it was, that was different, but yeah, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty standard Metal Gear stuff, though, in terms of the actual gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, the thing I liked about the first act is that they tried to fix that problem that they've had before, where the game just yeah. breaks when you get spotted. I thought Act One did a great job of uh, tweaking that in a really believable, cool game, interesting way in terms of gameplay. Anyway, Metal Gear Solid, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I uh, have mixed feelings about pretty much all the games in that series. Oh, and you know what? Just as another, I'm sorry, just as another comparison yeah. um, between Diablo 2 and Metal Gear Solid 2, or, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 actually does attempt to do that thing where I've seen Kojima talk about it, and he says his goal with 2, one of his goals anyway, was to try to have the main plot be about a character that isn't you. You know, I mean, you don't play Snake in Metal Gear Solid 2, at least not for most of it. And the game was so, sort of supposed to tell Snake's story in parallel to you playing as Raiden or Raiden. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought it just didn't... I liked the idea and I liked the goal. And I, I really didn't mind playing as Raiden. It made no difference to me. You, From a gameplay point of view, you were identical to Snake. So I don't see why people cared so much. But um, I just didn't think that 
this didn't come off very well. I don't think that actually succeeded. Whereas that's exactly what Diablo 2 tries to do. And if you actually care, you know, when you're playing Diablo 2, I think it actually succeeds quite well. So um, maybe Kojima will try that again someday. Uh, yeah, well, that's a very sedate note to end on, but I guess we're done oh. for the week. Oh, okay. We're done. I guess we're done. Take that. Yeah. If you have a reader mail, you should write it in. Yeah. yeah. To questions at idlethumbs.net. If you have any ideas for a sweet packs meet up maybe we can hear those yeah no guarantees we'll use any of them but we're gonna try to do something so that's that and uh, keep sending in those ultra boost flavors keep <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> cyborg drawings no yeah uh, and we will put uh the photographs of the guy and possibly a screenshot of a warcraft one wizard on our forum thread which is now which is now there expressly for that purpose come to our forums forums at idlethumbs.net questions at idlethumbs.net 55 wizard on the number of ways you can contact us is increasing all the time bye <laughs> goodbye babu <laughs> <laughs> video game <laughs> This was the worst idea! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, it's like. Out of phones! <laughs> what even happened to the phones? <laughs> you guys used to rock out so hard! Now you're just a damn miniature podcast! God. It's, it's like when they lowered that microphone baby. down into hell in Russia. And this is what you hear. <laughs> you know that urban myth? No. Like this recording was. <laughs> what is going on? Yo, I don't know. What happened to seeing me a super douche? How's it going? Let me know your new pop, JF! False. Alright. None of these are. Bye! <laughs> what You're the? You're out of time! <laughs> That's two words! Who's back? When's that Wally Luigi game coming out? How do you know? <laughs> All of these guys at the end of the episode after the episode's over. Yeah. Yeah, actually they are. God. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>